At a school, Ganta was watching an advertisement for a place called Deadman Wonderland. Mimi asked Ganta what he was looking at and Ganta said this was the prison that the whole school was going to visit. The reason is because that prison is arranged like an amusement park. Everyone has lived in the city for a long time so they want to go to the countryside to play. But Ganta, who grew up in the countryside, doesn't want to go there at all. Their best friend, Yamakatsu, arrives, and he blames Ganta for leaving him behind. Since Yamakatsu had slept in, Ganta did not wait for him. The three of them don't care where the tour goes as long as they go together. The bell rang, so the three returned to their seats. Suddenly, Ganta heard a voice singing, and from outside the window, an extremely dangerous man appeared floating in the air. The man started throwing chains into the classroom. Ganta was unconscious, and when he regained consciousness, he saw only a bloody scene. He saw Mimi so he asked, then realized her head was being held by that dangerous guy. The man discovered Ganta and stabbed him in the chest. When he woke up, he found himself in the hospital. The police came and accused him of massacring 29 students. Ganta didn't understand anything because he was clearly a victim too. The news station then reported that 29 students were murdered, and the police decided to arrest the only survivor and the only witness of this incident. The lawyer then went to meet Ganta and took him away. He thought the man in red was the culprit, but they didn't believe him. He wanted to show his injuries, but there were no injuries. The lawyer thought that Ganta was still in shock. He promised that he would do his best to help Ganta, but in court, Ganta was sentenced to death. Ganta was then taken away and was still very confused. When he regained consciousness, he broke free and claimed that he was not guilty. The parents of the victims rushed out and beat him because they thought he was still lying. Mimi's father punched him. Suddenly, his phone fell out. And it is a video recording of him being carefree because he is just a minor so he doesn't have to worry about legal consequences. Ganta said this was obviously a setup, but no one believed him. The lawyer also said that he could no longer appeal the sentence and left. Ganta was completely helpless. Meanwhile, at the prison, a white-haired girl was singing when she suddenly felt Ganta coming. Ganta has now been taken to Deadman Wonderland. Many years ago, Tokyo suffered an earthquake and heavy damage. This prison was built to attract tourists to revive Tokyo. It is also the only private prison in Tokyo. When Ganta entered, the female warden introduced herself as Makina. She saw that Ganta seemed obedient, so she thought he was repenting. She said this place is a business with its own rules. They collect money from the performances of prisoners. That necklace contains all the tools to suppress prisoners, from electric shock to locating the wearer. A guy was pushing a cart and bumped into Ganta, so he helped him pick up his things. But Makina asked this guy to return what he had just stolen. He appeared innocent and was slashed by her very decisively. She said reality is something that cannot be escaped, and neither is this prism. Meanwhile, the lawyer came to find Makina and wanted her to execute Ganta soon. She didn't understand why the lawyer had to rush because sooner or later Ganta would die. Ganta is currently working and remembers his friends and this reality, all he wants is to die. A white-haired girl named Shiro comes to Ganta and tells him that if he wants to die, let her take his life. He avoided it, making her wonder and think he was lying about wanting to die. He saw that she looked quite similar to Mimi and asked who she was. She thinks that she and Ganta are friends, making him wonder why she knows his name. Suddenly some prisoners came to cause trouble, and Shiro was punched in the head for protecting him. He tried to protect Shiro, but was beaten by them. The lawyer knew about the man he met and considered him both lucky to survive and unlucky to meet that man. Ganta now began to feel pain in his chest. Suddenly, the bomb exploded right above from somewhere and caused the giant ball above to fall towards Ganta. He wants to protect this girl and is determined to live to find Red Man to take revenge. The power from his chest began to surge, giving him the strength to destroy the giant ball. Meanwhile, a guy was holding a hostage, so Makina had to come and handle it. He asked for some candy, but Makina knew he would die in a few seconds, so she didn't care. Suddenly, his face bled, causing him to die instantly. The bracelet also broke immediately afterwards. The candy this prisoner wanted was something that every prisoner in this place was given. Seeing that Ganta was still alive, Shiro was very happy to see Ganta again, and he also decided to consider her a friend. That night, Makina looked over Ganta's incident this afternoon. The bomb explosion was caused by the lawyer, but the fact that Ganta was still alive also made him feel interesting. Even though what he did caused three other prisoners to die, Makina wondered what was so special about Ganta. Ganta then went to the hospital for a checkup. Nurse Ray asked him if he had eaten the candy. Ganta didn't know what candy she was talking about. The young man who bumped into Ganta earlier, named Yu, confessed that he had stolen Ganta's candy, which was why Makina punished him. Yu believes that this place is very cruel, and there is no way to escape even if you run. 
If you want to live here, you must accept all laws, no matter how unreasonable. Suddenly Shiro came, she wanted to ask Ganta out. You realize Shiro was referring to the dog race, a competition organized by the prison for prisoners. Of course, in voluntary form. This not only brings income to the prison but also brings income to the prisoners. If you win, then you will receive a currency for this prison. If you have money, you can buy food and anything you want. You can also save money to reduce your prison term. Ganta isn't sure he'll make it, but he heard there's food there, so he'll join. On the way, he met Makina. Makina heard he was going to the dog race and asked him if he had read all the rules because he needed to understand the rules if he wanted to live here. Yu then calls a lawyer named Tamaki to inform him about Ganta's participation in the dog race. In the locker room, Ganta went over the rules of this prison. Yu came over and introduced himself. The two decided to become friends and at this moment, a famous person in prison came. He is Kuzuji, and everyone who sees him wants to withdraw from the competition because Kuzuji has won the Takedo Gold Medal and won the Martial Arts Tournament twice. He once lost his career because he got angry when he couldn't get an actor's contact number. He realized that Ganta was a newbie, so he punched him for not bowing to him. He then also knocked you down and stepped on his hand. He did not let anyone withdraw from Dogface because he was worried that the race would be cancelled. He wants to win that money at any cost. In this prison, besides the warden, he is the law. He then grabbed Ganta and wanted him to smile. Granta tried to smile to survive when Kuzuji kicked him in the stomach. Shiro returned with cake for Ganta and stepped on Kuzuji's foot, making him want to punch her, but Makina came to stop him. Kuzuji was afraid of her and did not dare to resist. Yu was taken away and escaped the competition this time. Ganta after reading the law, he learned that this necklace would slowly inject poison, and the candies were the antidote. If you don't eat candy after three days, you will die. The price of a piece of candy is equal to the prize for this competition. If Ganta cannot win to get the candy, he will surely die. Lawyer Takami saw Ganta participating and decided to raise the danger level to the highest level and told the body removal team to prepare because there were children coming to watch today. He wanted that side to take care of things properly and assure the audience that this was an act. Right from the first challenge, the flying axe, many prisoners died. Those who leave the track will be shot dead. The audience just thought this was an act. The second challenge is the bungee. If they choose one that's too long, they will hit the ground. Shiro and Ganta jumped down. Ganta was lucky to have a short magic rope, and Shiro was able to land on her own. The third challenge is flying arrows. The prisoners had to fight through the arrows flying towards them. If they fall below, they will be electrocuted to death. Kuzuji used his two juniors as shields. Ganta was constantly supported by Shiro and escaped death. Thanks to Shiro, he overcame many challenges. Shiro said that if he didn't want to follow the rules of this place, he should just make his own rules. The two then worked together to overcome the next challenges and reach the final challenge. Kuzuji praises Ganta when he reaches this place. The rule of this round is that they must survive while the floors gradually collapse. Only one person left holding the ball will win. Ganta caught the ball and was targeted by Kuzuji. The floor begins to collapse, bringing Ganta face to face with Kuzuji. Kuzuji realized Ganta was the high school murderer and started mocking him causing Ganta to get angry and throw a ball at him. The ball was caught by Shiro. Ganta decides to follow his own rules from now on, so he challenges Kuzuji. Ganta then dodged and stood in a corner where Kuzuji couldn't reach. Shiro fell. Kuzuji tried to run to safety, but couldn't make it in time. Shiro was still clinging to a corner of the floor and threw the ball to Ganta before the floor she was clinging to fell. But Ganta missed the chance to win and rushed to hold Shiro's hand. The contest had no winner, making the audience angry. Ganta knew his chance to get the antidote was lost, but he had no regrets. Tamaki was later reprimanded by the council because his actions caused many prisoners to die. But he wants them to keep their mouths shut and continue funding this prison because this is where they are holding Red Man. Ganta was now eating the cakes with Shiro. He felt like today would be the day he would be executed by poison. Many prisoners now feel lucky because they did not participate in the race yesterday. Yu heard everything and saw that everything and everyone was being implicated by Ganta. Ganta now thought he was about to die, so he wrote a letter to Mimi's father. Suddenly, Yu came and said that they were both placed in the same room. He returned the candy to Ganta, making him very happy. Yu wants Ganta not to forget this favor because countless lives have been shed for it. He didn't understand why Takami cared so much about Ganta. Takami gave Yu certain privileges to have him monitor Ganta. Seeing that Ganta had difficulty eating the candy, Yu took him out for a meal. Takami now heard that the security system had been taken down by Red Man, and he had fled. 
Ganta and Yu now went to eat ice cream. Yu will treat him to this meal, so Ganta doesn't need to worry about money. Seeing Ganta being so kind made Yu wonder if Ganta was the one who really killed his classmates. While eating ice cream, Ganta remembered memories with his two best friends. It was the happiest time he'd ever had. Suddenly, Ganta's chest ached. Red Man once again came to Ganta. He creates a whirlwind that is capable of severing anything it touches. Ganta saw that the tornado had injured Yu and was very angry. He was determined not to let Red Man take away his friends again. Ganta burst out in power and threw a blow at Red Man's head. But Red Man was still completely unharmed after that attack. He just smiled and then left. Ganta ran out of energy and couldn't chase. Seeing that Ganta had truly become what he was looking for, Takamit was extremely excited. Yu realized that crazy things were happening one after another, so he thought about withdrawing from the deal with Takami. Ganta then regains consciousness and meets Shiro again. He thought he was dreaming, but looking at the injured prisoners around him made Ganta know it was real. Ganta realizes that Red Man is also in this prison, and that he has used the same powers as him. It wasn't an illusion that he saved Shiro last time. Ganta then heard from some prisoners that Red Man had appeared a few years ago, and was currently being held in solitary confinement in Block G. Makina at this time knew nothing about what had happened and only listened to Takami's words that terrorists had caused that. She didn't know what Takami was planning, but it was definitely related to Ganta. She suspects Ganta possesses a powerful weapon. She then ordered Ganta brought here, ordered all prisoners to be placed in solitary confinement, and brought out a dangerous weapon. Four years ago, this thing was used to suppress a dangerous criminal and leave 24 people dead. Now they will use it again. She ordered all the prisoners back to their cells and asked Ganta to come see her. If you resist, they will use force. Takami called Yu over and asked him to observe Ganta more. Yu refused because he didn't want to be associated with that monster. But Takami took out more money to give to Yu, making him quite hesitant. Ganta then saw that he was being called and tried to run away, but the emergency door was closed. Yu came to ask and learned that Ganta wanted to go to Block G to find Red Man. Yu was surprised because someone escaped from prison. As for Block G, this place doesn't have Block G, only from a to F Shiro knew the way to Block G, so Ganta asked her to show him, but she suddenly sulked. At this moment, the robot came. It identified Ganta as its target and rushed towards him. He asked Shiro for directions. She removed the ventilation hatch to help them escape. The robot opened fire, and Ganta's group got in on time. All three were blown down, but the robot still chased. Shiro found a way. But the robot rushed straight at Ganta. Luckily, Yu's pickpocketing saved them this time when Yu stopped the robot. They then arrived at Block G, following Shiro's instructions. But when the robot came, the three still managed to escape in time. And Makina did not expect that in this prison there was an area that she had no control over. Ganta's group still hasn't escaped the robot. He thought this was the end and he would get two more friends involved. But suddenly Shiro rushed out and kicked the robot in the head. She was angry because Ganta kept refusing to consider her his friend. But the robot had returned. Ganta wants to save the only friend he has right now, so he tries to use his ability. But Ganta could not release his power. A young man, named Kiyamasa, suddenly appeared and used the same ability as Ganta to slice the robot in half. He is the one who was oppressed by this robot in the past. Ganta realized that the man was Red Man, so he rushed forward to fight to the death. But Kiyamasa took blood from his body and attacked Ganta. Ganta is injured and realizes Kiyamasa has turned his blood into a blade. Takami heard that the prisoner had escaped from Block G and was rebelling. Kiyamasa says that tomorrow is the day of battle, but now he will take him to hell right here. Ganta then charged at him with an iron bar, but Kiyamasa simply dodged it, causing him to stumble and look like an idiot. Just as Ganta stood up, Kiyamasa cut the iron bar in half. Kiyamasa saw that Ganta was too pathetic and couldn't do anything, so he got bored and left. Ganta understood that this power needed blood to be used. He roughly understood how to use it and threw a blood bullet at Kiyamasa. Kiyamasa used his tongue to block, but his blade was broken by the bullet. Kiyamasa begins to change his view of Ganta. He said he didn't know who Red Man was, and the way he was smiling made Ganta realize the guy in front of him was not Red Man. Ganta wondered about that power, and Kiyamasa said that Block G was built to imprison those who possess such power. Kiyamasa wanted to continue the match with Ganta, but Shiro rushed to kick him in the head. 
Kiyamasa realized Shiro was a girl, suddenly blushed and became confused, then asked her to put on this shirt. Suddenly, both Ganta and Kiyamasa were shot with an anesthetic by the soldiers. Shiro saw that Ganta was being harmed and rushed out to punch the soldiers. They were then captured and taken to Takami. He wants the soldiers to release Yu and the soldiers wonder why Shiro doesn't have an identification code. Takami said that it could be a server management error. Meanwhile, Makina had people search the area where the robot and Ganta fought, and there were no traces. The robot also disappeared, so she immediately knew that Takami had done something. She then went to find the director of this place. Yu and Shiro were now taken away. Yu asked why this place was hidden, and they said that the prisoners here all have the superpower to control blood and are very dangerous. They then took them both out of block G. Ganter regained consciousness and found himself lying on the lab table while Kiyamasa was in the infirmary, still confused when he saw the girls. The nurse wanted him to stop tomorrow's match when suddenly he threatened her that no one was allowed to stop his match. Takami tells Ganta the truth, he only pretended to be a lawyer to put him in this prison. Ganta angrily cursed him and was electrocuted. He then stopped and told him that tomorrow Ganta would have to fight Kiyamasa. Matches and experiments are a daily occurrence in Block G if Ganta wins a match. The amount of money he receives is many times higher than that of Dog Race. Of course, he will also have more candy. Takami tells him that if he wins many matches, he will meet Red Man. He is the most dangerous person in this prison and the first person to possess this power. Ganta vows to kill both Red Man and Takami. Takami wants Ganta to focus on tomorrow's match first, so he shows him a documentary. Many years ago, an event caused a parasite to appear. Whoever is parasitized by it will have the ability to control blood. To push the ability to use blood to the limit, an underground tournament in the prison was created. Looking at the scene of bloodshed, Ganta could only scream. He was then forced to watch it over and over again, to the point of mental crisis. In general, if you win, you get money and candy, if you lose, you die. Meanwhile, Makina went to find the director of the prison but was blocked by two guards because the director was now unable to receive visitors. She didn't want to rush into conflict, so she turned away. Yu is now very upset about losing money, while Shiro wants to help Ganta because she thinks Ganta is very weak. Ganta was then brought to the ring and confronted Kiyamasa. Everyone saw that this was an unequal battle between a veteran and a newcomer. Kiyamasa immediately took out his bloody knife. Ganta also had to bite his finger to make the blood flow. He turned around and started climbing a nearby tree. He kept his distance to start shooting blood bullets towards Kiyamasa, but it was ineffective. He fired a bigger bullet, but Kiyamasa still calmly blocked the attack. Ganta started to get dizzy because he had used too much blood. Ganta began to lose his footing while Kiyamasa cut the tree into pieces by lengthening his blade. Kiyamasa kept attacking Ganta, and Nurse Ray revealed that the source of Ganta's power was actually the fragment on his chest. To study further, they needed to cut him open. Takami says that if Kiyamasa wins, then Ganta will be hers. Ganta was now seriously injured. Kiyamasa saw that Ganta injuring him last time turned out to be just luck. Ganta right now feels nothing but pain. He remembered his old memories, and coincidentally, Shiro was in that memory. She also liked Ganta back then, although he was weak and was often beaten by her, but he is very interesting in that he can stand up for himself. He now stood up after Kiyamasa spared his life. He didn't want to lose and die, so he would continue fighting. Kiyamasa saw that Ganta had surpassed his limit, so he became interested. Ganta fired a bullet to drop the thing hanging up there. Kiyamasa concentrated on cutting that thing off, giving Ganta the opportunity to approach and fire a direct shot right into the old wound. Meanwhile, Shiro and Yu met an information dealer. The person Yu needed to find was also in Block G, so he decided to go back there with Shiro. The information dealer knew where to get there, so Yu bought it too. When he arrived in front of the guards, Yu told Shiro to keep quiet and make a plan. Ganta now woke up and saw that he had more candy. He ate it and remembered Kiyamasa. He finds Kiyamasa not scary and hopes to be friends with Kiyamasa. But at this moment, the screen showed Kiyamasa being punished for losing. Nurse Ray brought over a lottery machine. After Kiyamasa told her to stop, the machine showed the results in the right eye box. This means that Kiyamasa will have his right eye gouged out as punishment. Ganta looked at it and felt nauseous. Shiro now rushed into the command tower to sabotage, while Yu took care of the guards down there. He then reported to the command tower that Shiro alone was the saboteur, and requested that the power be cut off. He intended to use Shiro to get into Block G easily. Shiro was now surrounded, and she remained undeterred. 
Yu was having fun when suddenly the command tower was blown away, and the guards were flying everywhere. Kanta could not forget the haunting image just now. While Yu saw that Shiro also had the same monster powers as those in Block G but Shiro looked at Yu, smiled, and then fainted. Takami had to go see what had just happened. The two guards guarding the director's office came here to take Shiro away. They also saw Yu but didn't care. Yu has now decided that he doesn't want to get involved in horrible things anymore. Meanwhile, Ganta was worrying about his two friends when he heard Itadaki trying to eat some flowers from a girl. He took his food to Itadaki. Itadaki ate both the food and the tray but still didn't feel full. But both of them escaped in time. Ganta hid with the girl in her room. She introduced herself as Mina and said that she also knew Ganta through the recent match. She knew he had seen the torture videos, and they both felt disgusted by this place. She showed Ganta her wound on her back. She was abused by her biological father, and on one occasion, her powers spontaneously manifested and killed him. She was sent to prison, and her brother still believed she was innocent, so he tried to find a way to save her. She was tired of being here and didn't want to participate in deadly matches anymore. Ganta proposed to run away with Mina because, after all, they both had abilities. But he knows Mina is afraid of this ability, so he won't force her to use it. Yu now knocks out the guards while Ganta and Mina are running away together. Suddenly, several iron bars fell, causing Ganta to injure his leg because he saved Mina. The two were later found by guards. They realized that they should both go rest for tomorrow's match because tomorrow they would both fight each other. The director now told Takami to stop these meaningless matches, but Takami said that the director actually still wanted to watch them. The next day, their match officially took place. Ganta thought that the two did not need to fight this match, but Mina immediately attacked Ganta's legs to keep him from running. She is now truly revealing her true nature, the nature of a cold-blooded pervert. Ganta realized it was all a lie, which made him very angry. He fought back when Yu came from outside the cage and asked him what he was doing to his sister. Yu now knows that his sister is a person with superpowers, but he will use money to buy her freedom. Soldiers came to drag Yu away, but Takami told them to just leave Yu in the cage. Mina did not expect that Yu would accept going to prison because of her, but she still hasn't changed her nature. Yu thinks Ganta is a lady killer, but he tries to explain that he was tricked. She made a quick attack to knock Ganta down and ran to cover Ganta's mouth. She then pretended to be innocent in front of Yu. Ganta wanted to skewer her, but Yu stood in front of him. Seeing that Yu was also that stupid, she wanted to deal with him too. Yu actually knew that his sister had this superpower from that day on. At that time, he saw his father planning to rape his sister, so he grabbed a knife and rushed in. He thought he lost his temper and took action, but actually it was Mina who did it. Yu wants his sister to stop lying, and no matter what she is, he will protect her. But now Mina no longer regrets this brother anymore. She then began to torment Yu, forcing Ganta to fight back. But she used Yu as a shield. Ganta tries to explain that Yu is her brother, but she doesn't like this family. She then threw Ganta to the corner. He was forced to counterattack, but he knew she would use Yu as a shield again. She tortured them both and told them how much she hated her biological mother. When the tragedy happened, her mother abandoned her and only saved a flower pot. Ganta took advantage of the moment she was talking and fired a shot to rescue Yu. But she still had a whip left to tie up Ganta, but he just walked forward and thought she was the stupid one, gave her a knock on the head, and knocked her unconscious. The audience was very angry because Ganta was so boring, but he raised his finger and told the audience that it didn't matter how he won. The director found Ganta as interesting as ever, and he called Shiro to wake up and prepare to make his dream come true. He told Shiro to eat something, but now she acted like a different person, not the innocent Shiro like before. He had begun activating his power to fight Shiro. Ganta has now come to see Yu. He was fine after the battle and apologized to Yu for what happened to his sister. Suddenly, the prison shook violently. Mina's bed crashed straight into a nearby glass cabinet causing it to collapse. Mina woke up at this moment and was reminded by the scene before her of the time when she was abandoned by her mother. It was Yu who came to save her, and this time too. Yu was slightly injured from saving his sister, but Mina still believed that Yu was just a liar. He still wasn't angry at his sister, so Mina also felt guilty and went to remove the glass pieces from Yu's hand. He saw that his sister still loved flowers and decided to take her out of here. If they prosecute her, he will take all the blame on himself. Mina wants Yu to stop thinking like that because she can't change the fact that she was the one who attacked her father. Meanwhile, Ganta suddenly has memories of Shiro. The image of Shiro appeared more and more in his mind. Shiro defeated the director. He knew Shiro would soon not be able to return to her previous self because she was Red Man, an outcast. 
While the soldiers were taking care of the aftermath of the recent tremor, Ganta accidentally met Kiyomasa again and apologized to him for the eye incident. But Kiyomasa thinks it's a daily occurrence here. Kiyomasa tells Ganta that his fighting style has too many weaknesses, because Ganta only uses one move in combat. The two talked about childhood movies. Suddenly, Yu was kicked out of the room by her sister because she wasn't injured so badly that she couldn't change her clothes herself. Ganta looked in and a vase of flowers was thrown at his face, but he dodged in time, causing Kiyomasa to get hit. Ganta then asked where Shiro was, and Yu said that when they entered, they were separated. Ganta remembered that he had known Shiro before, when his mother worked for a research institute and Shiro was there. He often came to visit her, but one time she felt pain from being injected, which made her start to complain to Ganta. He left, sadly. He later saw that his mother was also upset about something when suddenly he was chased by a lab dog. He asked for help from the hero when Shiro landed on the dog from above. The two then reconcile and continue to play together. Yu really wanted to tell Ganta what happened but didn't want to destroy the image of Shiro in Ganta's mind. Makina is now very angry because Takami has locked all information about Block G and things related to superpowers. She is willing to violate the rules to bring everything to light. Meanwhile, Takami has obtained information about the stone on Ganta's body. It is the same as the one that parasitized Red Man and he cannot currently research Red Man because Red Man is the director's toy. He wanted to wait until the old director died, then this whole place would belong to him. Meanwhile, Ganta went to find Yu in Mina's room and only found her. He asked her if she had been punished yet, and she said she had lost a kidney before. Yu is going to get his money back from two soldiers who stole his money card. Ganta immediately runs away and is knocked down by a girl with powers, and Yu meets Takami again. Accompanying him is a monk with supernatural powers. Takami tells Yu that money cannot buy amnesty for his sister and that he will soon execute punishment on her. Yu wanted to do something when Monk Azuma shot him and knocked him down. Ganta was now awake. The girl said that she only intended to test his strength, and he still seemed not very skilled. She introduced herself as Karako. A guy came up and introduced himself as Nagi, the leader of the underground resistance force. Ganta noticed that he sounded quite mechanical. His goal is to destroy the cage that the director and Takami built. They believe Ganta will help them. Ganta realized that there were people with the same thoughts as him, but he wanted to save Mina first. Nagi told him to stay here for a while. Mina's punishment time has come, and Najiai took out a chip from his tooth to notify another party. Mina now realizes that she has changed and has hope only because of Ganta and Yu, but she wanted to look straight at reality and laugh hysterically, like last time. But her punishment this time was just having her hair cut. Nagi intervened because hair was not in the lottery machine. Suddenly, Azuma brought Yu here and took out his gun to destroy this room. Ganta wanted to rush to fight but was immediately blown away by him. He then pulled out the guitar and turned it into a weapon. Suddenly, Shiro jumped down from above and broke his guitar. She continued being Ganta's superhero and came to save him. Yu realized that he almost forgot about the real monster. Azuma saw Shiro here and decided to leave. Another member of the Resistance has now returned. This person is Rokuro, and he is the one who saved Mina. The entire Resistance army then showed up to welcome the new member, Ganta. Looking at this whole group makes Ganta somewhat happy because they are all cheerful and sociable people. Nagi then made something for Shiro to eat. Someone asked Shiro why she didn't have superpowers and why she was in Block G. She said she had always lived here. Nakina said that soon an inspector will come here to check. She believed that. By then, she could force Takami to reveal everything he was hiding. As for Nagi's army, they also took that time to plan. The arrival of the inspector will make Takami hide the secret here. At that time, they will rise up and riot. But their enemies will be people like Azuma. They are people who cannot be reformed, they have undergone a terrible punishment, and those who overcome it will become Takami's henchmen. Ganta thought the ability had no effect on them, so Rokuro watched the camera footage. Just now, Ganta's attack missed the target, not because his superpower was ineffective. Rokuro had told him that Ganta was unreliable and useless, which annoyed him. Ganta says he hasn't joined this party yet and leaves. Meanwhile, Takami discovered that the director was dead and was very happy because now the entire place would belong to him. Ganta now went to see Kiyomasa and asked him about Takami's henchmen. They are called Undertakers, and Kiyomasa is angry because he fought with Undertakers without calling him. Kiyomasa knew about Nagi and said Nagi had a feud with the Undertakers two years ago. Nagi and his wife were forced to fight each other. Nagi admitted defeat and was punished by having his larynx cut off so he could no longer speak. But Takami didn't like the way Nagi pretended to lose, so he punished his wife as well. 
The two tried to escape but were attacked by Azuma. Nagi's wife died, and Nagi could not call his wife's name. Ganta later encounters Nagi again, playing with Shiro. He apologized for being loud earlier. He said that the resistance army looked relaxed on the outside, but everyone looked like they were sitting on a fire. He fights not for revenge but to overthrow this place to be free because he has a child somewhere outside. That night, when Ganta went to sleep, he thought about his goal of killing Red Man. Shira wanted to go out and eat a lot, but because she always eats, she sets another goal of going to the Ferris Wheel. Anta promises to take her on the Ferris Wheel when they escape this place. Meanwhile, Azuma is upset because Shiro broke his guitar. But the new guitar has arrived, and we know Rokiro is serving Azuma. The inspector has arrived and will stay for a while. Ganta returned to the resistance meeting room to apologize. He wanted Shiro to go back to his room to wait for him because he didn't want her to get involved in this case. Shiro was quite sad, so Karako comforted her, saying that Ganta just didn't want Shiro to get hurt because he liked her very much. Hearing that, Shiro happily left. Nagi said their upcoming plan is not to escape but to expose the cruelty of this place to the world. They then started implementing the plan immediately. The control room began to receive warnings, and just as they were about to take action, Rokiro and Nagi arrived to deal with it. One member faked retinas to open the door, but if this bridge exceeded the specified weight, it would collapse, so another member used blood to make a suspension bridge for everyone to cross. But halfway up, the bridge started to collapse. The guard robot was sent to stop them. One guy was shot with acid and died. The robot then shot acid and hit the bridge, so Karako threw the hard drive containing documents about the atrocities in this prison to Ganta and put her hope in him. She held the bridge so they could continue despite the robot coming. When she realized that everything had passed, she used her blood to form a shield and turned back to fight the robot. She armored her hand and punched the robot in the head, causing it to explode. In the end, she fell down along with the bridge. Ganta's group made it to the other side and could only hope that Karako was still okay. They can't continue now because they need the elevator to work. If it is activated, it means that Nagi and Rokuro have successfully taken over the control room. Meanwhile, Nagi met a little girl. He thought she was lost so he told Rokuro to activate the elevator, but Rokuro laughed and revealed his true face. The girl introduced herself as an undertaker, the third squad leader, Hibana. Nagi has no choice but to fight. He had just used his superpower when he was hit by her sword. Hibana said this sword could neutralize their superpowers. Ganta's warning to them was true, and Rokiro re-edited the footage to catch them off guard. Nagi now knew he had to do something if he wanted his plan to succeed. He regained his superpowers, but he could not overcome the girl. He knew he had to get to the elevator switch, but Hibana wouldn't let him go that easily. Hibana decides to punish Nagi in the barbaric way of ancient China. Hibana considers herself a lady, but Nagi says Hibana is still just a kid because a lady would never do these things. Hibana began to remember what she did because of her mother. She believes that people who do wrong should be punished painfully. She then cut off one of Nagi's arms, but he bluntly threw that arm in her face and quickly rushed to knock Rokuro down to turn on the elevator switch. Ganta's group was able to continue, while Nagi collapsed. As soon as they went up, Azuma blocked them. Their superpowers are almost useless against these guys. Rokuro realized that Nagi had indeed done something amazing by both defeating Habana and activating the elevator. But the rate of the hard drive being taken out is almost 0%. But Nagi still believes in that small percentage. The entire group that accompanied Ganta is now almost dead, and he is their only remaining hope. He needs to get this thing out. Nagi now took out the chip in his tooth to try calling for help if someone accidentally passed by the meeting room. Luckily, Shiro came back here and met a certain young man. Ganta is now facing Azuma. Azuma did not intend to kill Ganta because Ganta's attacks could not threaten him. Azuma was then called away, so he would meet up with Ganta later. There are still three people left on Ganta's side. They tried to escape when suddenly Shiro ran up here. She asked where the hard drive was. She snatched it and threw it into a room about to explode. She thinks that hard drive is very dangerous, but Ganta knows that and thinks she just threw away everyone's hope. She thought she had to protect him because he was weak, but he bluntly punched Shiro and said he didn't want to see her again. The entire resistance team returned to the meeting room, and luckily Karako was still alive and had returned. When she heard the story, she didn't blame them. She then wanted to do it again. Just one person needs to get out of here, show the inspection team his superpowers, and tell them the truth. Karako knows Nagi is still alive because Azuma will not let Nagi die that easily. Nagi is indeed still alive 
and the reason Azuna spared Nagi was because he wanted Nagi to join the Undertakers. Meanwhile, Makina and her subordinates are copying data from Takami's room. Suddenly, Takami and a major came in. This major also seemed to know about Takami's plan and was his sponsor. Meanwhile, Karako wants to recruit more people to join the Resistance Army, as long as they are people who intend to escape. Several names were suggested, but none were suitable. Ganta wants to do his best to help, but Karako thinks they need someone with experience, and he's not what they need. He was also a bit self-conscious because he thought Karako was angry with him. Suddenly Rokiro came here, and he asked who ruined his plan. They still didn't know Rokiro was a traitor, so he frankly said that the hard drive was actually a bomb. They should have died from that bomb by now. Ganta realizes that Shiro really saved him. Rokiro is now assigned to another mission, while Nagi is still being forced to join the Undertakers. Azuma knew Nagi cared a lot about his friends, so he said he would kill them one by one until Nagi joined. The first person Rokiro chose was Ganta. Shiro was still sulking because Shiro helped him and was beaten. She went back to the director's room and ate cake. She remembered him and cried while eating. Ganta now knows that the original video that slandered him was edited by Rokiro. Rokiro orders two assassins to eliminate Ganta. One is a beast that was abandoned in the forest and raised by a bear. The other guy is a murderer who specializes in using women's skin to make art. But just as the two assassins were about to kill Ganta, Kiyomasa came to help. But the weapons of these people will still neutralize Kiyomasa's blade. Rokuro was enjoying himself when Kiyomasa flexed his arms and launched a blade at supersonic speed. Makes his weapon unable to be disabled. Ganta realized that Kiyomasa was completely stronger than him in every aspect. Shiro now met the guy who gave her the warning to go save Ganta. No matter how many drugs Nagi was injected with, he still did not join the Undertakers. Azuma wants Nagi to remember how two years ago, when Nagi's wife was killed, he went crazy and then came here and brutally killed 22 of his subordinates. Nagi could only hide in the closet out of fear. The Resistance Association now begged Kiyomasa to join the Resistance team, but Kiyomasa refused simply because he did not like the outside world. The world outside and inside is already crazy, but here, he has the confidence to be himself. Kiyomasa then left, and Ganter ran out to check it out. He now realized that he was truly a despicable person. He knew he was too weak, that's why everything was ruined. He was the one who deserved to be beaten for misunderstanding Shiro. He immediately ran to Kiyomasa's training room and asked him to teach him how to fight. He was tired of being weak and wanted to learn how to fight to save Nagi, so Shiro wouldn't have to worry about him and above all, to take revenge on Red Man. Meanwhile, Shiro didn't know why she was in so much pain. She didn't understand why Ganta hated her, why the cookies weren't delicious anymore, and no matter how much she ate, she still didn't feel full. Toto thought that Shiro didn't need to care about Ganta or those weak people anymore, but she misunderstood that she needed to teach Ganta a lesson. Meanwhile, Karako and the others decided to carry out the operation themselves and not let Ganta follow. They thought he had suffered too much, so this was the best decision. Rokiro thinks that their chance to escape will now depend on whether the Undertakers will stop them or not. But Karako doesn't care because she alone will infiltrate the Undertakers to stop them. She knew Nagi didn't have any children. His mind had unconsciously created a child out there to give him the motivation to continue living. Ganta is currently training with Kiyomasa. Kiyomasa tells Ganta to learn to control blood as a part of the body. Ganta asked how, and Kiyomasa told him to take out all the candies and then trampled all of them in front of him. Kiyomasa only kept one candy and wanted him to try to overcome the limit to get this candy or else prepare to wait for death. He will use his highest speed to attack, and if Ganta's bullet speed is not faster than his, then he will die. Suddenly, Toto came to Ganta to say hello, and also to find Shiro. Kiyomasa knows this guy and asks which corner he disappeared to all this time. Toto said that he had become the weakest from the strongest, so he wanted to ask for some blood. Kiyomasa was busy, so he didn't give it. He introduced himself to Ganta. After introducing himself, he left. Meanwhile, Takami called Azuma and asked him to deal with the rats. Azuma stole Naga's mind without even letting Takami know. Karako had now reached the Undertaker's place when she accidentally encountered Shiro here. Shiro was quite drunk, and Karako had to watch over Shiro. But Azuma recognized her voice and exposed her right here. Meanwhile, Ganta still had no progress, but Kiyomasa gave up and told him to rest before carrying out his plan with the resistance because he couldn't be anemic and lose consciousness. Ganta was down and still tried to fire one more shot, 
And coincidentally, this last shot came out extremely fast when it was almost flying to the target. Suddenly, Azuma announced to everyone that he had captured Shiro and Karako. He will let his men play with both of them first and then deal with them. Karako wants them to continue with their plan and not listen to him. Ganta couldn't bear it anymore and ran towards them, and Kiyamasa hoped Ganta would be able to handle them with his newly learned skills. Although everyone is heartbroken that Karako acted alone, they still have to put the mission first. Ganta ran while thinking that he had lost everyone's trust, so they removed him from this case. He was captured and oppressed by soldiers, but Mina came to save him. She was just repaying the punishment last time. She won't follow him because she still has a brother to take care of. She then left, and Ganta arrived in time to save Shiro and Karako. But the truth is that he only knows how to shoot accelerating bullets and kill a few soldiers. Furthermore, he is also seriously anemic. Shiro ran to Ganta and was thrown into the wall by Hibana. Azuma began to play the guitar. From the back room, Nagi appeared. Karako was about to run over when Nagi told her not to come closer. Nagi now remembered everything that he had no children at all. His only child was murdered while in the womb. He has now returned to his crazy nature from two years ago and will let this world know his pain. He then creates blood spheres and causes them to explode. Nagi then continuously kills the soldiers. Hibana begins to feel afraid of Nagi, but Azuma just ignores it because this is what he wants. Nagi then aimed at Shiro, forcing Ganta to rush out to block the attack. He wanted to make it up to Shiro, even though she kept screaming that he didn't have to because she wouldn't feel any pain even if she was beaten. But he ignored it and protected Shiro at all costs. He tried his best to wake Nagi up. He believed he still had some light of hope. But Nagi now only sees darkness. Ganta confesses that he is just a kid and does not understand Nagi's feelings. But he knows what it's like to feel the loss he experienced. But it was Nagi who enlightened him. He knew that, no matter where he was, there would still be light. Nagi heard the sound of Karako's bell and regained his humanity. He remembered his comrades who had enlightened him. Ganta suddenly collapsed and convulsed. He realized he was running out of time because he hadn't eaten the candy yet. Nagi was awakened by Karako, who helped Nagi realize he still had friends by his side. But as soon as she turned around, Karako was stabbed by Azuma. Outrage, Ganta fired a bullet and aimed it at Azuma. This bullet was much stronger and destroyed Azuma's bracelet. He fired another bullet, but it only gave Azuma a slight scratch. Karako used blood to create hemostatic armor. Azuma deliberately avoided her heart because he wanted Nagi to be the one to personally handle Karako. But he had returned to the person he had been for the past two years and assumed that the people who could save him were already here. Azuma felt sorry that Nagi had lost the demon within himself, so he opened fire to finish him off. He then shot all his soldiers, despite Ganta screaming at him to stop. Since childhood, Azuma lived in a temple and had a cat as a pet. But the three guys in this temple often tortured and beat him. The abbot still did not know anything about those acts. He asked for advice from the abbot and then gradually formed the distorted idea that death might be the salvation for those who have gone astray. And on the day the disaster occurred, the temple was destroyed, and the cat he loved also died. When the abbot found him, he had stabbed to death three people who had abused him in the past. For him, death is now beauty and his way of giving salvation to sentient beings. Ganta is now gradually having poison seep into his body. While running away, Hibana accidentally encountered Toto and was stabbed to death by him using a blade like Kiyamasa. Meanwhile, Azuma decides to save everyone until someone saves him. Ganta is fed up with this death scene. He decided he had to do something. Shiro's leg suddenly heals and she stands up to protect Ganta. But Ganta stepped forward and stood before her. He and Shiro suddenly got tattoos. Ganta's power also suddenly increased, helping him fire a huge shot. Nagi held Azuma to prevent him from dodging. Azuma realized that Nagi was the one who saved him after all. The large bullet sent him flying into the wall, and he was crushed to death by rocks. Ganta ran to Nagi. Nagi gives the candy to Ganta because he doesn't need it anymore. Ganta took it and listened to Nagi's last words before he died. He then went to Shiro. She once again saw the Ferris wheel and kept her promise to accompany him when exiting. Ganta also apologized to her for not acting properly last time. He also ate the candy and found it to be very bitter indeed. Not only bitter because of the medicine, but also bitter because of what he had to trade to get this thing. The next day, Takami was quite upset because Azuma was so useless. Makina asked him if anyone had escaped from prison, but he still tried to hide it from her and said that no one could escape her hands. She wondered about Yu and Ganta being missing for 11 days and returning with injuries. She will interrogate both of them. The following days, Ganta went to the rooftop to play with Shiro. She sang a song that his mother had composed before. 
He wanted her to stop singing that song because, that day, Red Man also sang this song. He wondered how Red Man knew about this song. 